Well, good evening and thank you for joining us. Let's get you caught up on tonight's biggest stories. This is the evening news on ABC 13. Testimony begins Monday in the sentencing phase for the man convicted of killing six members of a spring family. Today, a jury found Ronald Haskell guilty of the murders of from five years ago. Prosecutors laid out their case that Haskell sought vengeance against his ex-wife and her family. ABC 13's Maya Shea was there when the verdict was read. She joins us now with more. In the end, it took the jury about nine hours over two days of deliberations to find Ronald Haskell guilty of capital murder. Up next, they must decide whether or not he will spend the rest of his life in prison or face the death penalty. In the end, the verdict was not really a surprise. Ronald Haskell had already admitted he shot and killed six members of the Stay family in 2014. The only question, whether he was insane at the time he killed them. Today, the jury decided he was not. We, the jury, find the defendant, Ronald Lee Haskell, guilty of capital murder as charged in the indictment. The guilty verdict means defense attorneys are already focused on the next phase, punishment. Life without parole. We want to save his life. That's our job. Prosecutors are asking for the death penalty, pointing out that Haskell tried to kill all seven members of the Stay family. Cassidy Stay only survived by playing dead. Now, the 20-year-old was in court with supporters today. She fought back tears as she hugged prosecutors. They will return for the punishment phase that will begin on Monday. And defense attorneys admit getting a life sentence for their client won't be easy. Obviously, you've got to overcome the emotional component of that. And, uh, you know, again, I don't know what was going through the jurors' minds, but it's a difficult verdict. We knew going into it, it was going to be a difficult verdict for them. The jury expected back here in court Monday morning at 9 o'clock for the punishment phase, a portion of this trial that could last another two or three weeks. Reporting downtown, Maya Shea, ABC 13, Eyewitness News. And today was quiet, but we could see some changes in the weather this weekend. ABC 13 Chief Meteorologist Travis Herzog here now with a look at your forecast. Travis? And you might notice some of those changes first thing tomorrow morning as moisture streams in from the Gulf of Mexico. Otherwise, it's looking pretty nice for the rest of the evening with temperatures falling down below 80 degrees once we get into the 9 o'clock hour. Uh, we are expecting lows down into the low 70s, but not as low as the past few mornings because of the extra moisture. That also means there could be a touch of fog. It might be a little thicker north and west of Houston than it has been the past couple of days. And we'll also probably see a few rain showers, especially down to the southwest of Houston. Those rain showers will be working their way off in a northerly direction during the afternoon. And for some reason, it appears that Future Trek has lost the radar data, but the most moisture will be biased west of I-45. And that's going to bring us that opportunity for some rain that's actually needed out west, especially west of the Brazos River, where there's still some pretty significant drought conditions going on. High temperatures will touch the 90 degree mark in the spots that don't get the rain, where you do get the rain early you might be looking at highs only in the upper 80s but that's actually average for the time of year meanwhile in the atlantic we're monitoring category 4 hurricane lorenzo uh, this is a uh, near record strong for this time of the year in this part of the atlantic where the waters aren't nearly as warm as they are farther off to the west then we have karen which is still a ragged looking tropical storm expected to make that loop back westward but the official hurricane center forecast calls for this to get shredded apart by wind shear and dry air and become a depression we'll watch the remnant moisture, but what we really need to watch is moisture in the Gulf and moisture building in the Caribbean. But the moisture in the Gulf is what's heading our way for Friday and Saturday, brings a chance of scattered downpours. And then we're looking at an increasing chance of showers and thunderstorms on Saturday, again, biased west of I-45, which will keep more neighborhoods rain cooled with highs in the 80s. Then after uh, Saturday, the moisture begins to move out. So by Sunday, it's a 20% chance of storms and those highs are right back at 90 degrees as we go into the early days of October. And by the first week, in October, another big surge of tropical moisture may be coming in because the pattern remains more like August than like October, and that means no fall fronts right now in our 10-day forecast. All right, Travis, thank you. Well, check this out. This is the mess thank left you. behind after a driver crashed through a house this morning in Fort Bend County. Luckily, no one was inside that home at the time. Deputies say the man was driving, hit a curb, and hit the house before hitting a tree. He then tried to run from that scene but was taken into custody and sent to the hospital. We still have no word, though, on what caused him to hit that curb. And how about this uh, unpleasant surprise, if you will, for a customer eating lunch at Cheddar's. He got pinned in a booth when a car hit the restaurant in spring. 
Deputy constables say a driver accidentally hit the gas instead of the brake as he was trying to park. The car went into the restaurant wall, pinning that customer between, between the booth and a table. Firefighters had to remove that table. The customer had some minor injuries. Tonight, disturbing allegations of sexual abuse against a North Houston pastor. Paul Kane served nearly two decades as pastor of New Canaan Missionary Baptist Church in the Kashmir Gardens neighborhood. And now he stands accused of sexually abusing a 13-year-old girl. Harris County investigators were contacted about the alleged abuse in June. ABC 13's Erica Simon has the latest. This is bombshell news for everyone we spoke with today. And although church members say Paul Kane hasn't served here at the church since early summer when that investigation launched, he's been headhunter for a long time, decades in fact. Now everybody wants to get to the bottom of these allegations. We're charged with the first degree felony of continuous sexual abuse of a child. Paul Kane stood silent with his head down as he made his first court appearance. The Harris County Sheriff's Office started investigating this summer after a 13-year-old girl came forward claiming she had been abused by Kane. The girl said the longtime New Canaan Missionary Baptist Church pastor sent her explicit text messages and sexually abused her several times in 2018. One encounter allegedly went down at his house. For him being a pastor, pastors don't do that. New Canaan is located next door to a daycare on Hirsch Road and is surrounded by homes and several other churches. Several deacons who did not want to go on camera say Kane is a good man who was good with kids and often took them on field trips. Now some are reevaluating who to trust. It's sad, unreal, unbelievable, very uncomfortable because I have a daughter. She's 14 years old. Of course, most people we spoke with say if these are in fact true allegations, then this is terrible. This is disturbing. But a lot of people, mostly church members, also say that we shouldn't be quick to judgment and see how all of this plays out. We, of course, will stay on top of the latest and bring it to you. In Cashmere Gardens, Erica Simon, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. A photograph worth possibly a million dollars or even more will soon make its debut on the world stage. So what makes it so expensive? Well, the image includes gold, but that's not the most interesting part of how this photograph came to be. ABC 13's Charlie Edsity joins us with more on this one-of-a-kind image. This is the studio where that artwork was created and the process incredibly complicated and so complicated that these photographers had to figure it out as they went along. And the final image for that photograph, a picture of shoes. Inside this Simonton art studio, a pile of small shoes, red ones, Velcro, lace ups. We picked shoes because it kind of represented the, the children, the best thing we could possibly work with. And these ones belong to these faces, children growing up in war torn Afghanistan. One big children because they're the one who suffers the most and they're so innocent because they really don't know what's happening. It's a project spearheaded by Tomas and Ken, photographers who wanted to share stories of those impacted the most by war. So they went to Afghanistan, risking their lives to find those who face danger on a daily basis. He basically had them smuggled out of where they were at. They were living basically in Taliban controlled areas. And the outcome, a gallery of stunning portraits of those they met. And of course, the shoes. The children that these shoes belong to really have gone through some terrible things. I mean, you know, I mean, some of them are dead. A photograph of the shoes in front of the gate of Shark Kent has been created into a one of a kind piece of art. Using gold, platinum, and palladium, a large print was painstakingly created. So difficult that it came to a point that we we're going to abandon this project and do a different kind of print. This is the negative of the image, and here it is projected to its actual size. As for the finished piece, the artists say you'll have to wait. They will showcase it at an open house in December. But you're there with the people and they're so warm, so welcoming. And to see someone that have nothing and give everything is so unusual. We're in Simonton, Charlie Edsity, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. 
well, perhaps we have a buyer for uh, that art because a lucky winner <laughs> is about to come into a small fortune after hitting the Lotto Texas jackpot last night. Yeah, you could call it a small fortune, <laughs> right? Someone purchased a ticket at this Murphy USA station off Highway 105 in Montgomery County, and they matched all six numbers correctly. The jackpot was more than 23 million bucks. So the deal is, under Texas law, they can remain anonymous if they won more than a million, which of course they have. This person has 180 days to claim their prize. Who knows, maybe it was one of us here. You won't know. Well, just one total closure to put on your radar here, something to look ahead to the weekend. This is the West Park Tollway eastbound exit to Post Oak. This starts tomorrow night at 10 p.m. It goes until Monday at 5 a.m. This one will cause some delays in that area. We know it's always busy, especially on the weekend. So if you want to avoid that area, just take Richmond or US 59 as your alternate. Thank you, Bree, and thanks to all of you for getting caught up on the evening news. Yes, and be sure to join us tonight at 10 on ABC 13. Good night.